Hello there, Internet. Mr. Welch here, and welcome back to the Stanley Parable. Since we didn't follow the narrator's instructions last time and things got messy, we're going to listen to him to the letter. Get a good story. Okay, narrator? What now? I'm all ears, buddy. You point, I go. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Ah, I see. It's a good cycle. Cycles are important. I think they're efficient. Oh, broom closet. Awesome! Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Broom closet! Cool! There's a broom! Can I take it with me? I want to take the broom. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. We're talking about reasons. There's, 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 uh, there's some pliers. There's a wrench. There's a monkey wrench. There's some wire and it duct tape. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least, if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally broom. just standing there doing broom. sweet fa. Oh, hey, easy. Broom, tell me your secrets. Are you? Don't you are you really still in the broom closet? Yes. Standing around doing nothing? Yes. Why? Because. Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. No. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? Yep. If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. Yep. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. Well, I like I it. I never would have thought to mention it. I like it. Maybe but... to you this is somehow its own branching path. Mm -hmm. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Ow! Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. <laughs> Pick all you want, narrator. I ain't moved. Now it's just to spite you, really. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. Oh, hey! He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. Oh! That or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Okay, now, screw you, man. I ain't moving. Mm-mm. Not well, I've inch. come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. Mm -mm, not listening. You're dead. Nope. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. Don't listen to him, he I'm not she dead. She has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Don't listen. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, really... so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. Big-headed idiot. All right. When you've done that, just step out into the hallway. No. I ain't doing that. You called me fat and ugly. I ain't moving. Not one inch. Mm -mm. I, I, nope, I, I'm sticking by what I said. You called me fat and ugly. That's just not polite. Until you apologize, I am not moving from this spot right here. You can, as the great Shakespeare once said, stick it where the sun shineth not. Fine. Jerk. Still want to apologize. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. Screw you, man. I'm out of here.
Back in the broom closet, of course. I'm brilliant. You too? Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. I win. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. The fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. Hmm? I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. No. You gotta apologize. You called me fat and ugly. Unless you legitimately believe that this is a different person, in which case, narrators are weird. Unless there's any narrators out there watching. Uh, I meant, of course, just this particular one. No? Fine. Be that way. Still a jerk. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I know it's downwards. I don't like that ending. So, let's go up. Oh, nice office. What's this? Executive bathroom? Hell yeah! Oh, man. Damn. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked? Unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his mm. boss had been keeping that? from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Oh, it's... 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. All right, let's not screw around. It was... Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by yeah. sheer luck. Amazing. He yep. stepped into the I'm newly the opened passageway. Which, where? I don't, oh. Piano. Can I play the piano? No. Right, lights. What's over here? Is there something over here? No. Okay, looks like there would be. I don't know with this game, man. Music. All right, after that broom closet detour, it looks like we are on some smooth sailings. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Wow, the narrator actually sounds like a narrator this time. Good for him. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Damn. Damn, 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 damn. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. I'm sure. Narrator, you've been lying to me, the haven't you? The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. We'll see about that. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Am I really gonna die? That's just what he's trying to get me, because he's the narrator. If I don't follow the story, he gets all pissy. Perhaps not. I may have actually killed myself there. Oops. I couldn't help myself. It was too, it was too tempting. Oh, jeez. Where am I? Hello? As the machine whirred into motion, and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, oh, he's done he reflected the truth. that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. 
He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. There was Stanley. Why do we have this room? Oh boy. Hmm? Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. I'm stuck. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated Lady? as the machine crushed every bone in his body, Can killing him instantly. I'm stuck. The science said escape! Oh. Huh. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back yep. in his office as alive mm. as ever. Yep. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? I don't know. He's weird. When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? If you want to be a bring down, sure. Ye. Ah. The impeccable Kevin Brighton as the narrator. Um, so which which ending is this exactly? I bet I like it, it's a nice atmosphere. Ah, that's an interesting point. The point of the Stanley De Parable the HD Remix is to lose. Hmm. An ending where Stanley would wind up in a battlefield fighting aliens as the action game would be sentient and would wage war against the narrator. We realized shortly after starting to build it, this was far too jokey and on the nose for the tone of the game. Plus, some people interpreted it as making fun of people who like shooters, which was not our intention. That seems like that concept sounds like it'd be a game all on its own, really. After the second trailer we sent out, we asked people to e email the narrator for questions. While we had initially planned to use these in further promotional materials, we never found the perfect use for them. Here are a selection of those emails. How's the game going? I hope it's good. I hope it's good or better than the first one. From a cool man. Regarding your game in the works, I appreciate the previously Stanley game is. Oh, these are all to the narrator, not. Okay, because all right, not. Well, this is cool and all, but I feel we should be getting a move on, huh? Apartment ending. Cargo lift. These are bits of the game I never saw. Very cool. Oh, I get it now. There is no ending screen. Look all you want. There's. Oh, yes, there is. I thought that would be the point. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Meh. Can you see? Can no. you see how much they need one another? It's actually kind of dark. No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. Yeah, because it's dark. Can you turn on the lights? But listen to me. Hmm? You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. I can't Sometimes hear you. This thing's too loud. You'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time... What? Alright, so I lied. I was going to follow the narrator's exact words. So, we will find another ending in the next episode, but until then, this is Mr. Welch, signing off.